Hey guys, this is Pastor Tim, lead pastor at City Church of the Treasure Coast. Thank you for joining me tonight for 7 on the 7, our nightly time in God's Word, uh, our nightly time to pray during this great trial that we are all facing. Many of you know, of course, that the president last night has extended the CDC guidelines to 30 more days. And I want to dive into God's Word today to see what God has to say about our situation. John 16, 33, Jesus says this, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Now we've looked at Elijah for the last several days and you know, it's an amazing story that I think parallels what we are going through right now. Because in Elijah's time, there was great prosperity, um, but they were worshiping idols. They were not giving God the glory. And so Elijah comes on the scene as a hero, and God says, here's your first act as hero. You're going to tell everybody, especially King Ahab, that I am shutting down the system. I, am shut, I, I have guidelines for you. There is going to be no rain until I say there is rain. And we looked at this story and how God still provided for Elijah and then sent him to a poor widow. And I want to come back to the part of the story where rain flows again, where rain falls. Again, Lord, we need your healing rain to, to flow into our lives during this time, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Here I am in 1 Kings 18, verse 1. After a long time, in the third year, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, go and present yourself to Ahab, that bad, bad man, and I will send rain on the land. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab, and the famine in Samaria was severe. Now this is what's incredible because here he comes. This time he's coming to bring good news. The last time it was bad news. This time God has him coming to bring good news. And what I want to go back to is three and a half years. Three and a half years Elijah was hiding out, secluded, quarantined, under the radar, so to speak. And what was the purpose for those three and a half years in Elijah's life. I think it parallels what we are going through. Many of you have lost your jobs and you've gotten a bad medical report and you've gone through a lot of things that you never dreamed you would go through. The rain doesn't feel like it's falling. What is the purpose for that time? Well, here's what I want to submit to you tonight. I believe that that purpose was to prepare Elijah. We're talking about Elijah personally, not all the people, not King Ahab. I believe that time of quarantine was to prepare Elijah for this great work that he is now going to do. And you know what? God does the same thing for you and for I. He prepares us for greatness. He has perfect timing for our lives, and it usually doesn't line up with my impatient, my impetuous timing. And this has been a test of our patience. This has been a test of our trust. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. We've had to do that during this time. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. When we trust in God's timing, when we trust in God, that is when miracles can happen that will change the world. And we've been declaring and believing and we're asking you to declare and believe with us that a miracle will come out of this plan that the devil has had to bring death and destruction, that life and a miracle will come. When we wait for the Lord, when we take that time of preparation, that time of seclusion, we will hear his voice. And when we hear his voice, because we've taken the time to be in his word and trust him, we will be ready. Now, here's the problem. Most of us aren't ready. And so as, instead of being used and instead of going out and, and seeing a miracle, we just implode. And I don't know about you, but I've lost it a couple times already just during three weeks. And Elijah does this. He declares a drought. He goes to hide and hang out in the desert and then with a widow. He sees God's miraculous provision through that time of drought that he declared, through that time of seclusion. And then after the long wait, after the long drought, three and a half years, the time of preparation because he prepared during that time, because he sought God with everything that was in him during that time. Because of that, then, then at that point, after the time of preparation, then God says, I've got a present for you, Elijah. Here it is. 
you have to go and present. Here's the present. Present yourself back to Ahab. It's time to go. So what will Elijah do? 1 Kings 18, verse 15. Elijah said, As the Lord Almighty lives whom I serve, I will surely present myself to Ahab today. So listen, that time of preparation brought Elijah to a time of presentation. That time of preparation, three and a half years, brought Elijah to this time of preparation so that he's ready to have a time of presentation. And so what I want you to do, understand we are in the waiting. We are in the time of preparation. The time of presentation is coming. We are in the time of preparation. God has a presentation for you. He has something for you to do that is great, that is big, that brings hope and a future. And we believe that if we will trust God and submit to God and be in his word every day and bring our families back to God during the time of preparation, the time of healing and miracle and presentation will be closer than we can ever even imagine. I want to pray with you tonight that God will prepare you through this time and strengthen you through this time. Will you just reach out your hand with me tonight as we close out our time together with prayer? I want you to know you're not alone. You can reach right through here to tonight, today, whenever you're watching this, and we can touch each other in the unity of the Spirit. Maybe you're out there, you don't know the Lord. Reach out your hand as a sign of faith. Say, God, will you reveal yourself to me? Let's pray here today. Lord Jesus, we love you with all of our hearts. God, in the preparation, help us not to lose heart and be impatient. Uh, help us not to lose our faith, God. Help us not to lose our minds. But in the time of preparation, help us to become stronger and closer and more like you. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to trust you, Lord, uh, for that big presentation to come, a presentation of your miraculous healing, a presentation of you pushing back this virus, a, a presentation that you are God for the world to see. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters that are out there, some whom I've never met that are hurting tonight. And God, would you present yourself in their lives as they cry out in a miraculous way, Lord? Would you meet them right where they're at? But don't leave us there. Take us where we need to be. Father, I pray you touch every need that's being lifted up tonight with your grace, with your mercy, and with your provision. God, as you are preparing us for a presentation, I pray that the presentation of your grace and love would flow into our hearts tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for seven on the seven. I need to ask you to do something that will really help us. If you'll go to citychurchtreasurecoast.com and find the give online or donate now button and give a special gift tonight via credit card or check, it'll help us to continue to meet the needs of the Treasure Coast and our state and our world. Right there on our seven on the seven banner, there's a Facebook way that you can give also. Would you prayerfully consider giving your best gift tonight as we go into all the world to share the good news that Jesus loves you to all people. Again, we love you. We're looking out for you. We can't wait to get back together in person one day soon after this drought of time together. We can't wait for the rain to fall. We love you. God bless you. Have a great night.